My name is Vinod Balakrishnan uh, from Photoshop Engineering from Adobe Systems. Um, I just want to show you some exciting feature, uh, which is going to be. Stop you for one second. You have exactly five minutes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then let me reset my clock too. Okay, I'm going to show you some exciting feature, which is going to be coming up um, in the uh, next release of Photoshop. So the feature is going to be open type SVG font support in Photoshop. So this is going to be, so the, this is one of the best time to be in the type industry. So you guys heard the announcement in, in the 11.30 today. Anyway, um, so this is, uh, if you look at this poster, it has two SVG fonts. The first one is, uh, it's a Trajan color concept, this one. And uh, the other one is, you can see an emoji font. So when we ship Photoshop, we will have two SVG fonts. Also, we will be shipping. And uh, that is Trajan color concept and emoji one. And uh, Trident Color Concept was developed in Adobe, and uh, Emoji One was developed by Adobe and a small startup called Ranks. And my colleague uh, Miguel is going to talk about a little bit about that later. So anyway, let's uh, let's scale up this one and see what's going on. So as you can see, you can see the multicolor in this these glyphs. And uh, let's go to the next slide and uh, take a look at it. <coughs> so as you can see, as you can see the D, you can see the multicolor here. And also, you can see the gradients. So I think you might have seen in some of the many movie titles, you know, this kind of um, gradients in the movie titles. So with the existing fonts, if you want to do this kind of gradients, the designers has to jump through the hoops. So with the SVG fonts, it will come for free. And uh, there are two major features SVG fonts bring in. So one, one is multicolor in single glyph, and the second one is the gradients, especially the color gradients. I will just show you Let's see some of these things uh, in our glyph panel. <clears throat> so this is uh, this is one of our shipping feature. This is called on canvas uh, glyph alternates. See, so you can select one of these characters. We have around 20 variants for this SVG uh, um, in uh, a Trident color concept. So I can also jump to the glyph panel from here. And uh, then I can scale it up. And uh, so you can see the multicolor here. And uh, we also support stylistic sets. We have 20 different stylistic sets. We support the custom names for of those. And uh, let me let me show you the SVG uh, emoji one. So this is the emoji one, which has pretty much all the uh, emojis encoded in the Unicode latest Unicode standard. So I just want to switch my uh, mic to my colleague Miguel, and uh, he's going to. It's got one minute. Okay. <laughs> so um, now you're probably wondering, how do I make OpenType SVG fonts, right? I have, uh, I'm going to show you. You can do it in two steps. Step one, go, go to the next one. Step one, take a bunch of fonts. And with those fonts, wait a second. Uh, get a bunch of, uh, you'll, you'll get a series of uh, SVG files, step one. Step two, control, tab. take a, a font, a basic font, uh, followed by a series of SVGs, you get an open type SVG. W what are the requirements for this? There, 
if you have any more questions, approach yeah, me we'll be outside. <laughs> Thanks, we are running out of time. Yeah? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Super great teacher. Spot on time, spot on. Now, we have Jesus, who is going to present, and your time shall start shortly. <laughs> Are you ready? Mm, yes. Yeah? Okay. Your time starts now. Okay. Hello. Uh, well, yes, my name is Jesus. I presented uh, in the morning in the education uh, uh, forum. And uh, this, uh, I had this idea all, all day long uh, after hearing all the, the education presentations and all the business presentations. And I was thinking, I, I was also uh, talking with a colleague from, from Mexico, Eli. Uh, Eli is, is in, the, in the other uh, sessions. Uh, we were talking last night and, and tomorrow, uh, um, this morning, about the situation of type design in, in Mexico and uh, in other places in, in Latin America. I don't want to speak for another uh, experiences, but mine. Uh, uh, myself, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a type designer, but I'm also a teacher. And I have this, this like, uh, cloudy uh, panorama in, in, in Mexico, because type design, we have a lot of, of good type designers. Uh, we have a good, uh, good programs, good training. Uh, people are doing lettering and calligraphy. Uh, but there's a lot of, of things uh, against the, the, the economically speaking, against the work of the type designers in Mexico. So we have uh, all the, the situations going on, like society and the culture and the economy. Uh, there's also the piracy. We have a lot of, of issues in, in Mexico. Uh, uh, as a type designer, I, I have uh, registered really low sales in, in Mexico. All my uh, my funds uh, uh, sales uh, are purchased in, in in Europe and, and in the United States, but not in Mexico. So I was thinking, what what can I uh, ask for, or how how can I uh, uh, mend amend the situation? Uh, I mean, this is not to be a, a sad uh, a sad uh, participation. So I was um, uh, thinking that maybe the, the problem with connecting good type designers in Mexico and good works and uh, a good type industry, or, or at least a professional type industry, is about the experience and the exchange. So uh, I think in Mexico we need in, uh, industry approach and the universities, we, start, we need to start to uh, linking with the economic projects, uh, the active, active uh, industry of type, of type design. And I would like to propose uh, as, as a contact or uh, a, a way to, to do uh, short stays or to offer, uh, offer you all, people who, who have uh, design, type design companies or projects, uh, even in, in research. Because one of the main uh, things that uh, type designers uh, have, uh, fortunately, is the, uh, the easily global experience. I mean, talking about typography, it's, uh, it's something that we can do uh, here in Mexico or in Argentina or in Australia. So I would like to uh, do a public call for, to contact me first to establish uh, this series of, of, uh, of um, um, internships, maybe I, I'm thinking about uh, shorts, from short to medium stays, two, four, eight weeks for my students and another uh, uh, colleagues in Mexico to do this, uh, this uh, sort of, of, of uh, exchange. So uh, yeah, I'm offering you uh, my students. So they are, they are good students. They are really good, uh, uh, good workers. They draw, draw nice, they learn fast. I happen to know a lot of, of people who in, in one week uh, are starting to learn how to program by themselves, etc. But I mean, I'm kind of tired of uh, type design in Mexico being just like a hobby or just like a, a curiosity. I would like to, uh, uh, to propose and to impulse 
uh, this as an activity, uh, an economic activity, and the proper economic activity, because I think the, the goods are, are a lot, and we can do things together. So uh, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, please see Jesus um, to offer him your internship positions for his students. That's what the message is. Right, next up we have uh, Roger Black. Lights, can we have lights? Can we use that? Yeah. Your time starts now. Uh-oh, well this will be impossible of course. I've never said anything in less than 20 minutes. But <laughs> my name is Roger Black, and uh, I was thinking, it's getting close to 40 years that I've been coming to HIPI, which is kind of, you know, some, somewhat longer than most of you have, have been alive. And the, the thing is that um, when I started coming to HIPI, I came as a graphic designer. Uh, Aaron Burns told me to, I should come. And over, and, and I met Eric Speakerman, who told, exp, described the place as a German type founders club, which I clearly could not join. But bit by bit, things started changing. More outside designers got involved. Um, and then the world changed. Uh, to, since last year in Zen Palo, uh, there's, in my group, we, we have a new thing called Type Network. So I was asked just to make an official kind of, hello, we're Type Network now. And I see that I have quite a few colleagues, um, primarily known by their initials, DJR, uh, CJ, uh, PVB, <laughs> and JP, <laughs> my favorite. And um, so we're here, Type Network, uh, the kind of narrative we put out in the last in the last year was last, since June when it launched was that it's the natural evolution of Font Bureau. Font Bureau has always been a group of designers. Uh, David Burlow and uh, it, it was the chief and started it. Quite a few of the designers that he brought in um, have done very well on their own. Have gone on. Uh, we have tried to be. Um, uh, I mean, there's sort of a cycle. People, it, it, uh, designers coming into Font Bureau, uh, some of them, you know, get to the point where they really need their own foundry. And in the last several, the last few years, the tools uh, have improved to the point where it's really very possible for very good type design to be done by one person. Uh, but that leaves you out, you know, and, so, and type designers have never been the kind of people who like to be herded under fluorescent lights. In fact, they won't turn these lights on because we like it kind of dark. <laughs> and, and the thing is that um, the, the, in, nowadays it's very possible to, with, with, uh, with Robo or Glyphs uh, or Font Lab to, to do your own fonts wherever you are. Um, what's not so possible is the collaborative stuff. And so as, as we started thinking about what are the next steps for Font Bureau, there are a lot of very, very good designers uh, who, who uh, can be their own foundries. But as, as they've done, if they've moved to have their own brand, they have uh, continued on talking to each other and figuring out what are the kind of business things or what are the distribution angles and how do we approach the technology? How do we approach uh, the globalization of type where everybody's setting demand, demanding more glyphs than we think we could do by ourselves? And uh, every, every week, uh, we, can, we continue with the design call, uh, a Google Hangout that uh, started at Font Bureau. And basically, everybody talks about what they're doing and shows it. And, and people make comments that David, of course, makes a lot of serious comments. Uh, but everybody says, hey, what about this? And so uh, I just want to bring out. Um, you know, make, make a kind of official notice at a type I that type network is now here. Uh, it, 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 it did start with the uh, font bureau group. 
Uh, so Font Bureau is a member, but but and people who had fonts at, at Font Bureau like Leslie Cabarga, no, now called Xavier Cabarga, shows you how old I am, um, Cabarga type, and of course Matthew Carter, uh, Carter and Cohn is is part of it. DJR, this is an alphabetical order by foundry name, Font Bureau. Greg Thompson, who uh, it, by making his own brand is now back at the keyboard doing new fonts. In fact, I think that one of the things that happened with Font Bureau uh, change into Type Network is that we have an explosion of new design happening. Uh, there's also Contour has just joined, um, and that's with Sibyl Hagman, and that is the first kind of outsider, a friend, somebody we respected. Uh, the work is fantastic, but it was uh, the first the first foundry uh, from outside the, the Font Bureau group. Richard Lipton, I'm staying up here. <laughs> Occupant fonts, I got one too. He's living on borrowed time. Which is which is Cyrus Highsmith, which who must be mentioned. Uh, Peter and Victoria Rushton. Uh, who is our smallest foundry, but the most fun. So uh, I just want to bring that out. Tight Network is here. We have a bunch of people. I, uh, everyone stand up. All the people with initials. Peter, please. Jill. Uh, DJR. Uh, CJ. Uh, CJ, you met. I need to cut you off. We're cutting off. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. We have about seven minutes or so, ten minutes. Uh, if you guys want to discuss anything urgent, if you have any more questions about anything, um, yeah. We could think about licensing variable fonts. Yes, that Start, would be. Start uh, thinking about this uh, while having a beer or enjoying the rest of the conference. The price of them? The price of them? How are we going That's to price them? Thing. Well, maybe, maybe we should start thinking about fonts, not from a designer's point of view, but from a user point of view. I'm thinking you know, of that point of you know, view, yeah. Completely rethink, you know, not think of fonts as pieces of artwork, but think of fonts as pieces, as products, like a car, like a loaf of bread, you know. <laughs> if you approach it from that point of view, there might be different solutions available. I was wondering, I don't know if you're veering off from variable now, but the most interesting part I thought was um, whether variable fonts will be done by weight, whether you'll purchase a font um, with multiple weights and then you add additional weights to that, whether you purchase one weight, but if then you may want to combine more weights, or somebody else mentioned that you might, it might actually be a licensing model that you do buy a font which contains all of the weights, which is kind of an incentive for licensees to move over to the new um, format, but then you license both your different uses and different mediums, but also different variables. And just as kind of an open Yeah, comment. which makes it really, really complicated. And I can tell you now that most users just don't give a toss. Sorry, I, did, I, I cut you off rather rudely there, didn't I? <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, that's a good comment from Jackson, that I think weights are not really going to exist anymore in that font format model, but you could think about, do I want to pay a price for the full set of axes, or do I have offerings that only offer the, the weight axes, or the optical size axes, or um, width axes, and things like this? Yeah, I mean, I was you know thinking about what Bruno said about um, considering it from the user side as products. I mean, I think we all think about this concept of axes, right? But no one else thinks about that. It's totally confusing. So I think that um, if it's offered in such a way that you can say this has this added functionality, that you're going to have this fraction of the of the size of the file and if you are you know licensing the, the 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 whole family you can load it on your web page much faster or you know that's one thing that makes sense to people off the top and you can say these are the styles associated with this product but i mean i think totally trying to con explain this abstract model um is a challenge so i think you know it's really important to probably you know put yourself in their shoes and try to you know, break it up into chunk, you know, chunks that can be understood, if that means anything. Chunks. Just a little comment to that. I mean, I, I totally agree that that's the right way to approach. You just have to be aware and remember that 
uh, application support will be inconsistent for quite some time. Um, yeah. and so while most applications will be able to see the name instances, so you'll be able to see your compressed, your lights, your wave, most of them probably won't have the fine grain control that we may really want to talk about, may get want to get people excited about, and then they'll go into these apps and go, well, I can't use any of that. Um, so we have to be, be really careful in our communication. Any more questions? They're all tired. I, I have one more thing. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, today there was a lot of talk about value of fonts, and I'm actually asking myself if fonts have any value at all. You know, yes, they have to us because you know it takes a long time to make them and it's expensive. It has a value to us, but then again, that's from a designer's point of view. So therefore, when we think of licensing, we're thinking of selling them as expensively as possible so we get some money back. But from a user's point of view, fonts have no value at all. I mean, you can get free fonts on Google fonts. Why would you want to pay X thousand, whatever it is, to buy a license? Why would you want to pay for a license of variable fonts that gives you, you know, weights, widths, and whatever, singing and dancing? So well, I think one of the main things is, you know, that we also need to start changing the perception of what is the value of fonts to make our job much easier to sell the products that we have, to get that into people's heads. It's a question, uh, I don't not know. Not so many people ask this about uh, photography, illustration, and things like this. Not the second part of your question. That's going to be a little more difficult to explain. But if you see all these stock photos, and we all loved about them, um, I think if you see that, you understand the value of uh, a custom-made photography for like that is uh, really for that made for that purpose and or at least like uh, that you want to license from several different stock photo uh, agencies or something like this I think uh, uh, the age of metaphors are not is not over if you if you try to talk to your customers Jackson's not convinced I, I don't I don't want to talk about things in public Okay. <laughs> I think this is a, a this is a good point and what also worked really well last year is that uh the conversation started in the business track or on the official part continued over the rest of the conference and I think we will see this um at this time again that we will talk in the coffee breaks or on the way now to the next venue for the official reception and opening of the main track of the conferences and we have to make the announcement that you should not google the venue because it will lead you to the wrong venue in the middle of the city because the Academy of Fine Arts has two buildings, one a new building which is close to the river so whenever you find a dot on Google Maps that is close to the river that might be the right venue. <laughs> But if it's in the city center somewhere more in the middle part or further north, that's not the correct venue. So we all see you on what's, I, I forgot the address, but um, yeah, uh, bonus points for the people who can pronounce this. <laughs> Uh, it's Wybrzeże Kościuszkowskie. <laughs> for the taxi drivers of you guys. Okay, thanks so much for participating in the business track. Do you want to say something? No, thank you very much. Hope to see you again next and year.